So a few days ago, Fnatic announced the signings of Nico Doss and Roy over from Copenhagen Flames. And they're kind of taking the places here of Alex and Poison. And of course, you know, Broland came out of the fold moving over to NIP just beforehand. So I thought we'd actually kick off by talking about a couple of these players that fell out and why potentially they're not part of Fnatic's plans moving forward. So let's start with Alex. And the, uh, the place I want to begin with this one is thinking back to the end of last year, just after they brought in Smear to replace Jackinho. And Fnatic won two events in a row. They won DreamHack Open November. They won Republic Season 2. Along the way, maybe not always the biggest scouts, but teams like Ents and, you know, big, these sort of teams were taken out in these runs to win these tournaments. And Fnatic looked pretty good. Strategically, they look fine. Um, using, you know, players like Broland to get aggressive, take duels. Mezzi was towards the late round and Smear kind of filled in when needed. So overall, strategically, they look fine and the calling looks, looks, looks kind of doable. But coming into 2022, uh, it was quite a steep decline. Of course, a player like Smuya, for whatever reasons, inside or out of the server, was starting to have issues and the style wasn't working. And I suspect that when they came to playing the lands and the bigger tournaments, when you have days to prepare for games, um, they got prepped hard. And that also probably was a reason why strategically they didn't look as good this year as they did the year before. So I feel like Fnatic's style under Alex was a lot of kind of set rounds of calling four ones and less defaults. And. I don't think that's a particularly great style unless you really know what you're doing and you've got a lot of strategic depth. And I feel like Fnatic just couldn't update their playbook fast enough to keep up with this. And when with some of those players, maybe they should have been playing a bit more default centric. So those are issues kind of on the server for Alex. We do know that there may be some outside of this server. I won't go too much into them, but needless to say, I don't think Alex leaving this team is all that much to do with in the game. Maybe that's a big factor, but... There's certainly some stuff going on outside the server that, that I'm sure had an issue. And clearly, Fnatic as a team, as an organization, and some of those players simply feel that it's worth pursuing a different route, trying to find potentially a different in-game leader. Or maybe they just felt that under Alex, it wasn't going to work and it wasn't going to pan out. And they'd kind of ran that experiment. So that's why Alex is no longer in the fold. Now, Poison's a bit of a different story. Now, to my knowledge, and this might be wrong, I don't believe Poison was ever fully signed. I guess they had him on a trial contract from the start of um, when did they first use him. They used him in the qualifiers for the RMRs into Pro League. And um, actually, at the start with Poison during these tournaments, Poison looked really great. He looked like, um, particularly at Pro League in the groups, um, they were using two stand-ins for a lot of it. They're using Poison, Banjo, and Pepsil because Crims couldn't play because he had, uh, I think he had a positive COVID test. So Banjo had to st step in for, I think, the first three or four days of the group stage. And they actually made playoffs despite definitely using two standards and then a third if you count kind of Poison as well. So lineup was all over the place and Poison was playing really well. We had some phenomenal games in the group stage over at ESL Pro League, beating, I think, against G2. He had a monster game and he looked really brilliant in some of those series. But the problem with Poison is extremely inconsistent player i suspect the reasons for these inconsistencies boil down to fundamental issues in his gameplay maybe his mechanics are good and he's good when he's aggressive but in terms of having a complete game i'm not sure poison's all there and when you look at him as a player when you're not going to get this consistent output maybe it's just like there's just no upside to poison in the long run why not take a risk on a younger player that you can grow into this role kind of properly for your system and have, you know, comprehensively, um, you know, complete game, be able to play mid round, late round and communication is good. So I just feel like Poison isn't worth it versus younger players that you could mold into being really great. And let's be honest, you could probably get them on, you know, lower contracts, save money, this sort of thing. These are always considerations. And that's why I just don't think Poison uh, was ultimately kept on this lineup. I think it would have worked fine continuing with Poison, but I guess from their perspective, why not go with a younger kind of talent and uh, potentially have a bigger upside? So that covers those two. Let's move on to the new boys. So let's start off with Roy. Of course, just came out of Copenhagen Flames. He's actually 28 years old, which surprises a lot of people. So Roy's been around for a while. He's kind of dibble dabbled in a lot of those um, tier two slash three Danish teams had a few kind of bigger tournaments, bigger results. But of course, with Flames, the, the the standouts would have been the RMRs last year. And then the two majors was where Flames really hit the ground running and put in some great, great performances. And for me, Roy was without a shadow of a doubt, the best player on Flames. He was the best part of that team. 
he's a player that plays a lot of different roles. I think he thrives the most in being a bit more aggressive, particularly on the T side. And when you've got players on Fnatic, like Mezzi, like Crims, who, whilst they are quite complete players, you want these players alive for the late round. Mezzi, in particular, is an excellent late round player, and he likes to be a little bit more passive. And I think Crims is kind of in the same boat, where why throw him in early against these young aimers? You might as well use his you know, immense experience and understanding of these late round situations and keep him alive so he can play the three on threes, the four on fours, and win you some uh, really great afterplants. So that's why I feel like Roy is a really great signing because he can kind of feel this edge that maybe they lost uh, without Brolan on the team. And I bet also for Roy, he had a lot of options, four teams to go to. So clearly he sees value in this project. And uh, yeah, the only, only downside I see to Roy is, is his age. And even that is, you know, a load of crap really in terms of, you know, losing, uh, l losing, you know, you know that that twitchy aim or or reaction time it's a load of rubbish and even if he declines by a couple percent he's going to make up for it in terms of experience so roy brilliant signing and yeah as i was saying i bet a lot of teams wanted roy on their lineup after this major cycle now let's move on to nikodos so in my eyes nikodos has improved significantly over the last 10 months and i'm really thinking from let's say the summer player break of last year from july into august and nikodos of course Whilst I was coaching Endpoint, we played Flames so many times, man. <laughs> so many series, we played Flames. And I've got to be honest, in those early days, when we're thinking about a year ago, Nikodos wasn't a player that stood out to me as, you know, the, the super impactful or, or really truly amazing Orpa. He had his numbers. He didn't play badly at any point in time. He just, he didn't stand out as a superstar player that was going to take over the game. And I know Nikodos has had some really excellent performances, particularly on LAN. I know he had some great games at... Uh, the Stockholm Major in particular, but I still think Nikodos has some growing to do. Now, I do think he has improved quite a lot since Flames have kind of risen up, especially into the top 20 and maybe the top 15, and he's played better teams. I do think Nikodos has improved, and it sounds like he has the mentality to continue in that direction. So I definitely think Nikodos is a bigger risk, quite a lot of a bigger risk, I think, than, than Roy. And I'm not saying he can't grow into a really great player, I'm just saying that he's not as complete a player as some of you might think at the moment. And I, I, I suspect when he goes into Fnatic and he plays with the likes of Crims, Mezzi, under Keita's leadership and, and the organization, he's going to have to grow a lot in terms of becoming a more complete Orpa and having better decision making because that's where I think he has the most to grow. So I'm not super down on Nico Doss. I just feel like Roy here is the superstar signing and, and Nico Doss is the one that's, for me, got to prove a little bit on the server. And I hope he proves me uh not necessarily wrong but but um surprising me a little with how much he grows and how well he plays on Fnatic because um i do really hope he continues on his upwards trajectory so that's the new lineup for the moment um on the statement they made i believe it said something to the tune of they're trialing fifths they're exploring options um i very much suspect they're just going to use pepsor from their academy lineup for the next few tournaments until that kind of question gets answered. In terms of what sort of player they like, and we'll get into this in a second, you've got two choices. You either pick up an in-game leader and play with similar roles to what you had with Alex, or I think you pick up a younger, high-caliber talent, someone who's going to play middle of the map and get aggressive. And, you know, alongside Roy, they'd be the aggressive rifle as well. You've already got some of your more kind of passive options. So those are your two choices. And I suspect Fnatic over the next month or so will heavily debate which way they want to go in because it's going to really define their team moving forwards. Now, the really big question, of course, with Fnatic is, okay, you don't have Alex anymore. Who's calling? And they said in their statement that it was going to be Mezzi in the near future. I'm going to read a bit of the statement because it's quite cryptic in how they word it. And you'll see what I mean after I do. So they say... Mezzi joined in August of 2021 and quickly showed himself as a reliable, confident player as well as a strong leader within the server. Mezzi will serve as the team's IGL as we head towards our next competitive event and we're happy to see his continued growth in Fnatic. Now, it's extremely telling in this kind of statement here that they don't just say, Mezzi is the new in-game leader. He's going to lead us through all the tournaments moving forward. It's absolutely intentional that they say Mezzi will serve as the team's IGL. That means I'm almost certain that we're going to try Mezzi out as the in-game leader and see what happens. Now, can Mezzi be a good in-game leader? Probably. Um, it's certainly inside the game. He's got a great mind for the game. 
His communication has always been pretty flawless, um, and he understands the the macro aims and how how to call. And I'm sure this will all be fine. Problems with Messi will all come around from. He's a little bit reserved now. Maybe he's grown since I've coached him into a bit bit more of a vocal figure, but that that will need to be brought out of him. He needs to be kind of the the focal point of this team and really picking up some of the other players, especially with some of their new signings and the players they've lost. So I feel like Messi. Um, certainly as a as an individual could call fine i just uh there's probably going to need to be a little bit of growth in terms of being a leadership figure and really mentoring some of these players and being you know you know a big bolsterous component of a team that doesn't necessarily have those that many sort of players at the moment so that's where the issues come from and will it work out i have no idea i to be honest don't like the idea of mezzi calling and that's a little bit because I'm biased towards Messi as an individual player and wanting to see him continue his growth as just an individual player. It will make him play worse. I don't think he's going to play all the spots he really likes having to be an in-game leader. And you are losing the best player on the team, in my opinion, to calling. And, and he will have a drop-off. It's just absolutely certain. Unless the only way his, his, his individual level won't drop off dramatically is if Keita almost solely is setting up the team and coming with all the ideas and... I don't think that's a reasonable expectation or is going to be at all sustainable for anyone. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not super happy about the idea of Messi calling. The only reason it really makes a lot of sense from Fnatic's kind of perspective is what option do you have? If you're not going to use Alex, well, where are you going to find another really great in-game leader? I'm sure they considered Hooksy. Maybe Hooksy's off to somewhere else. But for whatever reasons, they just don't have a lot of options on the table. There aren't that many great um, English-speaking in-game leaders that would be willing to join a project like Fnatic. So... I'm not super surprised they haven't got great options and that's why they're going in this direction. And um, it'd be really interesting to see how it plays out. I kind of hope he doesn't stay calling and they find someone who can at least, um, you know, fill that mantle instead and Mezzi can be a good secondary caller because that's where I see him as a player. He's, he's just a Noah vocal component. I, I don't like the idea that much of Mezzi being a, a kind of all-out in-game leader. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. I don't want to say it's going to be terrible. I just don't think it's the best use of Mezzi when he's the best player on the team. And uh, yeah, it just seems like a little bit of a waste of him as an individual player, even if it might work, you know, as a team overall. So in terms of Fnatic's outlook moving forwards, first thing that's clear is they're absolutely committed to having an international project. Um, of course, they moved away from fully Swedish in the summer of last year when they picked up Alex and Mezzi and went into this kind of... Um, at the time, it was a British-Swedish hybrid, but overall, just more so um, an international lineup and, and looking towards getting English-speaking players. So they're ma absolutely committed to that route. There's no doubling back here and saying, okay, we made a mistake, we need to go fully Swedish. So they're absolutely uh, on these rails and they can't deviate now. It's either going to derail or, or be a great success. So we should expect that to continue moving forwards. I think in terms of the lineup, Mezzi, Roy, whether Mezzi stays calling or not, are the the really great building blocks of this team. They're your star players. They're, they're the ones you have to hold on to and build around the other pace pieces for me. Sorry to sound a little bit harsh, but they are kind of replaceable. And uh, if really good options did come available, maybe they would consider replacing the other players on this lineup. So I think the team has to function around these two. They have to be the focal points. They have to be the ones you have to look towards to, to you know, set up and listen to. And obviously if Mezzi's going to be calling, he's going to be, is telling them exactly what he wants and where he wants to play. So where's this team going to be? Moving forwards, I would say Fnatic almost certainly, when they sign their fifth, whoever it is, should go back into the top 20 in the world. I think that's a very reasonable expectation. I think that's obviously the minimum I think the team's going to want. Um, remember, they are an ESL partner. They're going to get a lot of invites to events, especially events like Pro League. So in terms of ranking points, they should be fine. And for that reason alone, it would be disastrous if they're not in, say, the top 25 and uh, probably a minimum for them, the top 20. Now, pushing forward beyond that, are they going to be into the top 10 in the world? Are they going to make top five in the end? I think it'll be really, really tough for this lineup. I've got to be honest. I don't think it's going to perform that well for the first few months. Obviously, there's speculation over who the fifth is, but with Mezzi making a role change, new players into the system, this is essentially a full rebuild from scratch and their whole kind of strategic style and how they're calling rounds and what set rounds they're going to use and roles. The whole lot is going to have to be done from scratch. And this will take six months to figure out. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, maybe 
maybe just coming off the player break, if, if they really sack a lot of the player break and practice for it, they can be pretty strong. But I wouldn't expect a lot. And for Fnatic as an organization, I'm willing to bet a lot that they're just thinking in terms of, you know, major cycles. And they're looking towards the next major in Rio. And that is when they want the lineup firing on all cylinders and anything between then is just a growth period. So that's when I'd expect Fnatic to be at full strength again, where they're actually going to pan out. Not really sure. I'd say low teens in terms of world rankings. 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, I think is a reasonable expectation and where I think they're going to pan out. I don't see this team, however, unless the fifth player is extremely strong um going beyond that or maybe it's a really great in-game leader and you unleash mezzi and roy so unless one of those two things transpires i don't think they're going to be in the top 10 anytime soon hopefully they surprise me of course i'd love to see mezzi playing well and um he's been hard done by by a lot of these international projects so far so hopefully for his sake alone i'm completely wrong and the team is back into the top 10 in no time but um yeah, I'd be a little bit pessimistic if I was you about this lineup. And even though there are some strong building blocks, there's a lot of things to figure out here. There's so many changes. And even though we're not looking at um, more than two signings at the moment, don't, don't, you know, don't get confused. This is a full rebuild and not a lot from the old Fnatic lineups is going to survive into this new team. And they're going to have to do everything from scratch. So, yeah, let's see how it plays out. At least it'll be exciting storylines to follow on the server. And um, it'll be nice to see players like Roy and Nikodos getting a shot in a higher caliber organization. One that's a partner team is going to get a lot more invites to big events. So those for me are the really exciting parts. What do you guys think? You know, whatever. Let me know on Twitter in the comments, whatever. Do you think this team is going to be good? Will it be bad? What are you apprehensive about? Are you really excited to see some of these players playing at a higher level? Who's the fifth going to be? Can Mezzi call? So many questions. And that's why this project is quite exciting, even if I don't think the upside is going to be that big. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap up that one. It was a lot of fun talking about this team. And of course, uh, yeah, hopefully Mezzi does some good stuff for the, uh, for the homeboys watching here in the UK. Yep, that's going to wrap it up. And maybe we'll do some more roster moves moving forwards. Maybe when Na'Vi announce who the new fifth ultimate is going to be, that'll be a good topic. But yeah, stay tuned for that. And it's been fun. I'll catch you guys next time around.